spring students. It's uh, Jeff Coppers here from Eastman's Engineering. Uh, we got a uh, tutorial today on how to create the CAM in 4.2 on the IED curriculum for basically it's the fourth part in the uh, in the assignment. Excuse me. So the hard thing, hardest things about this particular piece is that you have parts of a circle which we are which are called arcs if you're uh, not familiar with the term, and also at the same time we have a shaft and that shaft is going to basically be a hole. If we kind of zoom in, you can kind of see that there's going to be this square-shaped shaft. And this is, this is true also to make sure that when you rotate the shaft, that the cam will rotate. And this is obviously related to the box project uh, that you may or may not be working on currently as you watch this video. So we're going to show today how to create this part in Autodesk Inventor. So uh, what I'm going to recommend is that if you have a handout of the part, have it out in front of you. But I will flip back and forth between this window as well as Autodesk Inventor. So we're going to start by creating a part. And we're going to, uh, I just opened up Autodesk. So I'm just going to be creating this part here, standard.ipt. And it's going to load it up, and then we're going to start off right in sketch mode. So what we're going to do to start with is basically we're, this is really going to take one sketch, and it's going to be one extrusion. And once you uh, outline the face of the cam, then you'll be able to basically just go ahead and extrude it, and then you'll be done. So that's kind of nice in that regard. All right. Okay, so the part window is open, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start a sketch. And we're going to start it. We'll do, we'll do the XY plane because that's sort of the same perspective that they give us in the sketch. All right, so what we're going to start with is we're going to start with this uh, square shaft. So we're going to just draw a rectangle, right? And hit OK. And then I'm going to dimension this. Now, this rectangle is really a square, it's 0.125 inches. OK, so this dimension is going to be 0.125 inches. And we're going to also do this side. 0.125 as well. So there's our square shaft. It's okay if it's not quite centered at this point here. Uh, I'm sorry for placing anyone's OCD. I apologize. All right, so we got that. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to mark the center of this uh, part as well. And the reason we're going to mark the center is we have to make an arc that is created from this. And actually, what we'll do is it might be a little easier if we do it with circles instead of arcs. Um, but We'll see what happens here. So we have a radius thing. We got, yeah. Let's, do, you know what? Let's do it with arcs. We're gonna do it with arcs just because that's a that, that's gonna make a little more sense to some people. All right. So we're gonna mark off the center point, and I'm gonna do that by using the point tool. And I'm gonna put a point in here, and then I'm going to dimension that so it's exactly in the middle of the square. So a little trick for you. You know that when you're typing dimensions in, you can actually type in mathematical expressions. So if the dimensions are not shown, but you want to put it in the middle, you can actually just do an expression like 1.125 divided by 2, and it will do the math for you. So the same thing here. I'm going to do that here as well. And we'll do, actually, that looks like it's already in the middle, but I'm going to lock that into place here by doing 0.125 divided by 2. All right, and there we go. So now we have a center point as well as a shaft. Now, the hard I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. I'm going to start by creating a center point arc. Now, when you go to the arc tool here, you can hit this arrow, and you will see that there are three possibilities. There's a three-point arc where you define the three points on the arc. There's a tangent arc where you create something that's tangent to something else, which means it only intersects at one point. Or the center point arc, which means you define the center, and then you define two of the, end, the two endpoints of the arc. So that's the one we're going to use. So I'm going to zoom in here, make sure I hit the center point and not the origin by accident. So I do that. And I'm going to come out here, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit more here, make it a little bigger, pan over. I'm using a regular mouse as well here, so I'm going to try to get it a little bit, I'll obviously dimension it later, but I'm going to go all the way around. When I sketch the third point and sketch the last point, I'm going to do that. Now, I'm going to dimension the radius of this arc, and I'm going to make it 0.1, sorry, 1 1.25, so that's going to make it a little bigger. And let's go ahead and zoom out here. The other thing I want to do is I want to make these points along the same horizontal line. So to do that, I'm going to make a construction line. So, and I know I, I might be doing this a little harder than than uh, than you may be used to, or or maybe there's a better way to do it. That's possible, but that's okay. And Autodesk. The nice thing about Autodesk is that you can pretty much do anything, any way that you want. So what I did here was I just created a line. And I right-click the line, 
And when I right-click the line, there's an option to turn it into what's called a construction line. Obviously, that means that when you do a, any 3D modeling with this sketch, it won't include any construction lines. However, you can dimension to a construction line, and you can make it so that it works out uh, any way you want. It just won't include that in the sketch. And the reason I made that construction line, I started at this point, is I want to make this point at the end of the arc on this construction line as well, so I know for a fact that it's horizontal. And see, there's a horizontal constraint on this line right here, automatically placed. If not, I can always go up to my constraint tools and hit the horizontal here, and then I can hit that line, and that works out nicely. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to constrain this point to the line. So I'm going to hit my constrain point tool. I'm going to hit the point on the end of the arc, and I'm going to touch the line. And then now I have made it so that that arc is uh, centered and on the horizontal line, as the case may be. So that is, that's the first part, of uh, first order of business here. Now the second thing I have to do is I have to create another point up here. And that point has to be 1.75 inches away from the center point down there. So this one here, I'm going to create the point, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Let's get the. Well, this can be a little finicky at times. I know it's trying to automatically constrain it to the to the grid, to the line. So I'm going to be very very deliberate and make sure it's lined up with the point, which I think it is. And let's just use a collinear constraint just to make sure. It looks like it's fine, but. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. Okay, let me make sure. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, if I were if I do a construction line, I can always test it that way as well. So if I just draw a line from here all the way down and connect it to this point here, and then make it so that this, and I can make it a construction line there. It looks like it is vertical. So if I try to make it vertical, it should yell at me. Let's see, it looks like it's gonna yell at me. That's fine, okay, so it's already, so I, I did it correctly. So obviously to avoid this error next time, I could have made the square outside or away from this sort of origin, but the origin is one of those points that Autodesk likes to make sure it's there. And then uh, I'm just going to go ahead and remove, actually I can just make it this construction line, that's easiest. Okay, so now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dimension the location of these points, but before I do that, I want this point to stay put. So I'm going to introduce a lock constraint or fix constraint on this point by hitting this lock icon and then pressing this point. So I do that, and that makes that point not move, which is important because when I dimension this point here, and I dimension this point here, I want this to be 1.75 inches, and I want the other point to move in place of that. So if that moved, then that would cause possible chaos. So I'm just basically being proactive and, and preventing that. Okay, now here's the fun part. This is going to be this is going to be a little tricky to try to do. Okay, so I'm going to create an arc. And that arc is going to have a 0.5 radius, and I'm going to create it using this as my center point. Same way I did before. I'm going to use a center point arc. I'm going to just basically click this, and I'm going to draw a line out, and I'm going to draw a line here, right? So it's, it's, in a, it's an approximate arc. It's, it, it, we certainly can extend it afterward. Let's go ahead and just dimension it, and it's going to be 0.5. That was pretty close. I made it almost, almost 0.5. Okay. Now, here is the next step. Now, we can do it a couple of ways. Number one, we can start by creating a line here and extending that line to connect to that. And then draw another line and extend it to that. Now obviously right now this does, still does not look like the sketch and that's, that's totally understandable. The reason why is because we have to add a couple of what are called tangent constraints. Now the tangent constraint means that this line and this curve are one and the same. So if you, right now we tried to extrude this, we would get, uh, we would not be able to because Autodesk would be like, this is not a closed loop. There's not proper constraints because it's just sort of like this unnatural bend that you wouldn't have. You wouldn't have curve to line. You want to have a tangent. So we're going to introduce tangent constraints to accomplish that. So all we have to do is we go to this tangent constraint option here, and we're going to start by clicking the arc and the line. And see how, look, it, I modified the line for us. It modified the arc for us as well. And then click the line and click the arc. And because of the dimensions we had already put in place, that is basically the sketch right there. And that's everything we need. All we have to do now is we just have to finish the sketch. We zoom out. We extrude. And we're going to extrude this sketch profile here. And notice that it's leaving out that shaft, which is what we want. And we're going to go to 0.125 inches depth. And boom, there is our cam. That is the part right there. So that uh, is a good tutorial. And that's a pear shape cam, by the way, which is sort of our default shape. And we're going to talk about this shape more in lesson 4.5 when we go into our uh, cam motion lesson. 
So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you liked the lesson, please click like on this video and make sure you subscribe to Eastlands Engineering. And I hope you have a wonderful day and don't forget to be awesome.